بہت نہایت رحم کرنے والا ہے پیٹرولیم کلب آف پاکستان کے تحت ہماری ٹیکنیکل اور فوکسڈ ویبینار سیریز کا سلسلہ جاری ہے اور آج کا ہمارا یہ ٹیکنیکل سیشن اس کا ٹاپک ہے جیو کیمیکل ٹیکنیک فار فارمیشن ایویلیویشن اینڈ آئل واٹر کانٹیکٹ آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن ان اے میچیور ٹائٹ کاربونیٹ ریزروائر فیلڈ اور ہمارے آج کے گیسٹ اسپیکر ہیں ڈاکٹر سید آصف احسن صاحب تو ڈاکٹر صاحب میں آپ سے ریکویسٹ کرتا ہوں کہ کائنڈلی پلیز انٹروڈیوس یور سیلف اینڈ اسٹارٹ دا لیکچر اوور ٹو یو ڈاکٹر صاحب Okay, thank you, Tahir. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone who is participating this, uh, in this uh, presentation and seminar. My name is Asif Aysen, and I have done a lot of PhD in Norway for 20-22 years. After that, I worked in different companies in Norway and Pakistan, and now I have been here for 9 years in Abu Dhabi uh, at NOC, uh, as senior to chemist. Um, یہ پریزنٹیشن جو میں دینے جا رہا ہوں ہمارے یہاں ایشو ٹائٹ کاربونیٹ کیونکہ ہمارے سارے ریزوائرس جو ہے وہ موسٹلی ریزوائرس جو ہے ہمارے کاربونیٹ کے ہیں اور جو اپریزل کے لیے ریزوائرس اس وقت ہمارے پاس اویلیبل ہیں وہ ٹائٹ ہیں ہائی واٹر سیچویشن ہے اس میں سگنیفیکنٹلی ہائی انڈیوسیبل واٹر کنٹینٹ ہے ان کا اور ان میں ایسے ریزوائرس میں سیچوریشن جو کنونشنل پیٹروفیزیکل مینس یوز کیے جاتے ہیں ان میں کافی ایمبیگیوٹی رہتی ہے اسی لیے ہمارے جو کانٹیکٹس ہیں وہ ڈیفائنڈ نہیں ہے اور واٹر کانٹیکٹس جو ہے وہ ڈیفائنڈ نہیں ہے ہم یا تو آئل ڈاؤن ٹو کی بات کرتے ہیں یا واٹر اپ ٹو کی بات کرتے ہیں ان ریزوار ٹائٹ ریزوار کے کانٹیکس میں میرے ساتھ اس اسٹڈی میں وجے دانتلا ہیں محمد عارف ہیں تعمیر کوکسلان ہیں یہ میرے کلیگ ہیں کمپنی میں یہ ایک بریف آؤٹ لائن ہے تھوڑا سا سلائڈ ڈیویشن ہے اس اس آؤٹ لائن سے کچھ سلائڈس جو ہے میں نے بعد میں انکلوڈ کی ہیں ان دا کانٹیکس آف ٹوڈیز پریزنٹیشن The objective of this study was to apply core plug and well cuttings expect yield and saturate aromatic resin and S14 content for hydrocarbon saturation estimation and oil water contact at identification, which is of course a challenge, uh, uh, as I uh, said in my introduction, uh, resistivity based, uh, based saturation in tight carbonates as well as plastic reservoirs may yield variable results depending on what factors we use in the RG equation. Uh, these are A, M, and N factors. Uh, hence, the resistivity based on uh, uh, these uh, factors, A, M, and N factors, uh, the, uh, the saturation can be quite variable. And uh, they are notoriously changing over uh, the extent of the tight carbonates. So, so they are not homogeneous carbonates. They are changing in their characters. Hence, their A, M, and N factors are also changing. So if, if you want to apply this to, to its fullest extent, I'm afraid we have to me- have the measure of these. All, otherwise, you will be just uh, estimating the water saturation, which is, of course, erroneously measured in most cases. So in order to circumvent uh, this issue with the RG inherent problem, the RG was developed for uh, plastic reservoirs, and those two for, uh, you know, Uh, reasonably porous uh, plastic uh, reservoir sandstones. Um, so uh, in order to circ- circumvent this issue, several resistivity independent methods exist. Uh, these include multi-frequency, dielectric, sigma or NMR, high definition spectroscopy, uh, and there are lab methods to, uh, to establish uh, the petrophysically derived situation Uh, you know, and these include Dean Stark and Core NMR. So you can see all these, uh, uh, you know, additional uh, tools uh, simply add up to the cost of evaluation. And what value do we gain out of this? And what va- uh, what cost do we invest in gaining those values? And how much are we certain in understanding the saturation of a given reservoir is really what matters. 
So in this study, we utilized 48 core and cutting samples from eight wells uh, and uh, SARA composition and extract yield was measured. SARA is saturated aromatic resins and S14 compositions. All oils and extracts can be divided on a bulk composition level into four components. These are called saturate, aromatic, resins, and S14. So simply the name is uh, showing what compound classes are found in each of those bulk compositions. Uh, direct hydrocarbon measurement on core plugs and well cuttings extract integrated with the log data has proven that it can provide high confidence hydrocarbon saturation assessment. And I'll be showing you in following slides what do we mean by that. Um, one may wonder that, you know, I mean, since these cores are uh, exposed to evaporation and they have been lying uh, in our core stores for several decades, uh, uh, how come that we can still gain uh, a value in terms of the extract yield uh, and its interpretation with respect to the saturation? Uh, yes, of course, uh, we understand and appreciate that uh, cores are, uh, uh, are evaporated uh, for its uh, you know, uh, uh, oil, uh, but still uh, the evaporation can be gauged, can be measured, and I'll be showing you how. So this is a uh, study that was conducted by Fugro uh, in 2004. And uh, here uh, you see the core plugs, uh, the extract yield on, on the x-axis and the depth of the samples, core plug samples on the y-axis from, from a well. And you see that there are there is a variable distribution of the uh, extract yield in these core plug samples. Uh, we had many samples coming from comparable depths that were extracted and analyzed in 2020 as well. So we have taken the same core samples from the same core um, and we have analyzed those samples. And what we found intriguing was this. So a sample that was analyzed in 2004 from the same core plug, from the same depth, was having a very comparable extract yield. The difference in the extract yield in terms of absolute value is because the different methods methods that were utilized in the 2004 study and in 2020 study. So despite uh, the span of about 16 years between these two samples, and, and I've not presented other samples, other core plug samples extract in the 2020 study because they came from comparable depths, but not exactly from the same depths. So the core uh, expects are quite variable uh, within a so, you know short uh, depth range. So, but these two came from exactly the same depths, and they were showing very comparable res results. I said that the extent of the evaporation can be measured, and this is how. So, what you do is that you extract the core plug by crushing it. Uh, and, and, and you take a given weight of the, um, the rock samples, uh, you crush it, pulverize it, and you extract it. So you know the volume of the rock or weight of the rock, and you know how much extract you have uh, got from that given core plug sample. So of course, uh, as I said, that cores are, expect cores are uh, prone to evaporation. And here is what happens. So you have uh, all these NLKs shown as regularly spaced peaks from a gas chronograph, okay? And you see NC13 and 14. So around NC15, nothing evaporates despite its storage in the core. So if you, if you extract a core, uh, you know, which has been in the core store for many, many years, uh, you would still see NC15 and higher NLK to be preserved in your core samples and extract dry from that core. However, as you go to the lower NLKs, there is a progressive decrease in the concentration depending upon how, how long this core has resided in the core store. So you see the relative uh, you know, decrease. So the black line represents the actual concentration that we have measured now. And the dotted lines are restored line. How do we restore it? Because there is, is a definite um, you know, uh, slope of distribution of these uh, NLKs, which you can drive 
by extrapolating it from uh, the NC15 to heavier NLK and extrapolating it back to NC1, okay, so which is methane. So, of course, methane is not found in uh, core extracts, although I'll be showing you uh, how we can find still methane in core plugs, which is adsorbed and not free uh, methane that is found in the core plugs. So, so you are seeing a whole range of NC, uh, you know, NLKs which are lighter than NC15 uh, being evaporated to variable degrees. So up around, you know, uh, less than NC10, you are seeing a complete attenuation of those peaks, so, which means that those have been completely evaporated, but you can still restore. So once you have a complete idea what compounds have been lost, during evaporation, during core storage and evaporation, uh, you can restore the original composition of the oil, which would be close to your uh, PVT sample. So although you are measuring it in a coarse extract, but you can al always restore your sample to what it would have been uh, in, in a, in, in a you know, pseudo PVT sample situation. Uh, so these are the two uh, samples. One is the oil sample, and the other one is extract, and those two have been derived from the same, you know, basically the uh, the core extract is of the same uh, source rock. It is basically from the source rock, and this is oil, and we have proven in an another study that these uh, extract from the source rock is actually the source rock that has generated the oil that was found in the reservoir uh, from this oil. So this is a reservoir oil, and this is a core extract. And you see the slope of the angle is, is the same and uh, the relative losses, although are different. In an oil, you have less degree of evaporation compared to a core sample. So in order to uh, avoid this losses, uh, companies invest heavy amount, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in procuring and acquiring a core, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is what we call the pressure core. Uh, and those are then, when brought on the surface, are quickly vexed and, and to, to avoid any losses before the, the core samples are analyzed in, in the lab. So you, you try to minimize the extent of the evaporation by acquiring the pressurized core and, uh, and wrapping the samples in wax. I said that even the gas components can be restored. Uh, so uh, when you crush the gas, uh, I mean, a, a, a pulverized sample in an airtight mill, and the mill has a steel ball, you close the lid of this uh, mill and you put uh, the known weight of the uh, rock cuttings, uh, even, you know, be it from uh, well cuttings or from core plugs, and then you, you pulverize it. Uh, under the uh, shaking action of this mill. So, so mill uh, rotates inside this mill, uh, uh, the, the ball mill, the steel ball uh, rotates inside this mill and pulverizes the rock sample and liberate the gases. But these gases, um, so provided in this uh, mill is a septum, a rubber septum, okay? And you can insert the syringe through that septum and suck off the gas and insert into your GCFID and analyze the gas concentration, uh, which is locked inside the, uh, you know, edge lock in the uh, rock samples. So you can measure the gas, uh, gas composition and the relative distribution of different gas components, uh, you know, be it hydrocarbon gases or non hydrocarbon gases. You can measure them all and even the isotope composition of this, those gas components in your samples. Okay, so, so even surprisingly, you know, uh, rocks can still hold significant amount of gas that you can measure um, using some, you know, some specialized lab techniques. Here is what uh, we have measured, uh, you know, the, the brown bars are uh, the mud gas uh, concentration of, diff of methane. Uh, so, a sample from 7,400 feet, a sample from 7,400 feet, 8 feet, a sample from 7,809 feet or 10 feet. So all these samples are depth, depth specific and we have taken the core plug from the same depth and we see that there is a significant difference in the methane concentration of what we see on a mud log and what we see 
from a crushed gas sample. So that all the, the blue bars are the gas concentration, methane concentration from uh, the crushed gas uh, analysis. You see a huge, huge difference between the two. It's because um, we know that there is a huge um, concentration of uh, gases which are adsorbed in these tight source rock intervals. So that is why we are seeing a huge difference between the, um, uh, between the gas that we see on mud log and what we see on a crushed gas analysis. So here's the instrument for extraction. Um, it is uh, simply uh, using a, a, an organic solvent, a low boiling organic solvent, putting your crushed gas samples in paper cellulose thimbles and those thimbles, uh, you put your crushed samples, pulverized samples inside those paper uh, thimbles, cellulose thimbles, and those thimbles sit inside those beakers, and beakers are filled with solvents, a low boiling point solvent, and solvent is sitting on a hot plate, temperature controlled uh, from these panels. So you, you put about 30 degrees centigrade temperature of the, of the plates, uh, when these beakers and the solvents inside them experience 30 degrees centigrade, these solvents evaporate and go above, and there is a water running through this instrument on the top. Uh, so when uh, the solvent hits uh, the cold water, it uh, condenses and drips through the cellulose uh, lined, uh, you know, thimble. Uh, inside those thimbles is our pul pulverized rock sample. So any extract, any oil in the rock sample is brought into the beaker. Okay. So this goes on for uh, in, a, in a reflex cyclic mode, you know, solvent comes again and evaporates, goes up and drips through this, uh, the thimble and, and, and the sample is collected into the beaker. So once no more change in the color of the, uh, of the solvent plus extract is no more observable, you stop the, uh, this process of solvent extraction. And then you evaporate the solvent and you measure the weight of the uh, extract. And you know already the weight of the rock sample that you've extracted. So here is uh, what happens in the instrument on a detailed level. So weight percentage of extract is the weight of the extract uh, divided by the weight of the rock. And, 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 and you, if you want to do it, uh, make the uh, measurement in percentage, you multiply it by 100. So SARA composition is measured in a very complex instrument, which is called medium pressure liquid chromatography and uh, saturate aromatic resins and asphaltines are uh, separated using the silica filled glass columns. Uh, so what you do is you inject your extract in uh, inside here and the solvent starts uh, 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 running uh, you know, through a pump and pump is com controlled uh, through this uh, computer and the pump uh, pumps the solvent uh, bringing along the, the the extract into the silica column and uh, silica column first eludes um, the saturate content along with the solvent and it gets collected in these uh, containers here and uh, once this uh, process is completed the pump now uh, starts uh, pumping another solvent in a reflex uh, uh, cycle and then it starts eluting aromatic with the other solvent and that gets collected in the other uh, 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 you know uh, glass container here so so basically you have two components saturate and aromatics of the same sample collected in those two these, these two containers uh, with the solvent of course and then finally, you uh, extract the silica filled column with the third solvent uh, for resins and asphaltine. Okay, so this is how you separate using the organic solvent. This is a tedious, lengthy process, um, and then of course you have to evaporate the um, the solvents to measure the quantity of saturate and aromatic. Uh, so this is a non-destructive method. So you, what you what you have is you have a physical sample of saturate uh, component as well as the aromatic resins and asphaltine components. Uh, this is a you know, solvent extraction method. There is another method of um, uh, separating uh, the oil into its constituent components, uh, SARA components, uh, which is a pyrolysis-based method in which um, you 
get the composition of saturated aromatic resins and asphaltenes of extracts or oils. However, you will not physically get the components itself. Okay, that will be destroyed in the process of uh, measurement of, uh, of these components. That is easier, faster, and cheaper method. So pyrolysis-based method can also be utilized to, to get the SARA composition. So, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll be showing you why do we need the uh, saturate aromatic resins and s concentration. So here is uh, the study samples, uh, basically eight wells. Um, how do we do the appraisal in uh, ad hoc is, uh, is, is in a following way. We drill a vertical pilot hole, we get the maximum data, we take the core in the vertical pilot, and we find the best reservoir interval in which we will drill a horizontal hole. Okay, So each vertical appraisal well has a horizontal hole, uh, a horizontal producer, and if uh, if uh, a water injector will be required for that uh, horizontal producer, okay. So, for example, uh, V4 is a vertical well, and its uh, horizontal counterpart is H1, and H2 is a water injector nearby to support the production um, from H1. Uh, these broken lines of different colors uh, are indicative of the low case of oil contact. So, which has been determined using petrophysical means and all that. Uh, uh, so, low case is basically a proven, uh, you know, uh, case uh, contour where oil has been tested. Okay, so any depth above this um, uh, red polygon uh, would indicate a proven oil uh, uh, case. Okay. So you can see um, V4 was built outside and and and. Uh, this green polygon is indicative of the base case, which is a middle case in between, uh, where you may have um, some log data on which uh, there is a presence of oil has been indicated. However, that oil has not been tested. So this green polygon represents that depth level. Okay, so maybe a log data is uh, very promising on, on, on these depths. And the blue curve is uh, the high case, and typically it is the um, uh, lowest closing contour for a given reservoir. Okay, so in appraisal, what we do, we we drill a vertical well followed by a horizontal producer and a injector, horizontal injector. So these uh, vertical wells uh, were uh, drilled much earlier. So V1 was drilled uh, way back in 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 early 80s. Uh, V2 uh, was uh, drilled also in, in, in the good old days. V3 was drilled, you know, also in the past. But in the recent campaign, we have drilled H V4, H1, H2, H3, and V5. So you see that V5 is also drilled within the low case, and it has a horizontal producer as well. Uh, so V2 was drilled within the low case, and we will now be seeing how does these uh, well locations with respect to low case, base case, or high case, uh, or below high case, for example, V4 well is, is drilled below high case, how does it reflect in the core and cuttings? Because we have the cores, core plugs available from the vertical wells, and we have the well cuttings available from the horizontal holes. Okay? So we'll be seeing how does the uh, extract yield and SARA composition uh, conform to our understanding of the low base and high case in this case of, of the field. So what happens, uh, this is a real core uh, from, a, uh, from one of the wells that I've shown you in the previous slide. Uh, when you have, so extract yield decreases and saturate content increases towards oil water contact. So as you are moving towards oil water contact, uh, your extract yield is decreasing and saturate content is also decreasing. Up in the pr proper oil column, you will be having uh, several folds of uh, high extract uh, yield value and high saturate content. Okay, And within the transition zone, I mean, uh, unfortunately, we do not have a defined because our reservoirs are tight, thin, and we do not have a defined oil water column. So you have an oil column, of course. Uh, above which there is 100% oil, 
uh, and there is a water column below which there is 100% water. But in between 100% uh, water and 100% oil, you have a big transition zone because the, the, the reservoirs are tight. So, so within the transition zone, and our reservoirs are mostly from the transition zones, um, you have a lower amount of extract yield and lower amount of saturates uh, compared to proper oil column. And any uh, sample coming from oil water below oil water contact, uh, you know, will be very high in uh, uh, in S14 and resins, and very low in saturate and uh, and uh, extract yield. And uh, we all know that um, mobility of an oil from a reservoir is dependent on two factors. It is dependent on the um, the viscosity of the oil and the permeability of the host product. Now, the viscosity is, of course, dependent on uh, oil composition. And, and predominantly, that viscosity is determined by its saturate content. So if you have higher saturate content, the viscosity of that oil will be lower compared to an oil that is having higher asphaltine and resin concentrations. So oils containing high resins and asphaltine concentration will be more viscous. Okay? And hence, from a given reservoir, they would be less likely to flow or their mobility will be significantly reduced. Okay. So this is how the extract uh, is distributed. So although there is not a threshold value of the extract yield which will determine, but if you have a core from all these zones, you can very establish, uh, easily establish what is the oil column uh, extract yield and what is the SARA content of the oil column. Okay. So that will be a definition specific to that reservoir for that well. And, and based on which you can also decide your perforation and, and, and testing strategy. Okay. So here is the uh, log data of three vertical wells, V1, V2, and V3. The map location I've shown you. And you, you see that, um, you know, gamma ray is... Uh, the green curve and these dots, the brown dots, are the saturated to resin and S14 you know, ratio. Uh, the blue curve is the porosity. The red curve here in the last track is the water saturation and the green dots are the extract yield. So you see as you, and the blue polygons here are the free water level. So all the samples, core plug samples that came from the free water level, they have very low in extract yield. And uh, above the free water level, the extract yield is high, and uh, which is matching nicely to the water saturation derived from the petrophysical means, the resistivity-based saturation. And above the main oil zone, there is a dense, uh, you know, uh, layer, uh, non-reservoir layer. And again, there the core plug, <coughs> the core was take, taken, and the core plug uh, extract yield was measured it is showing low extract yield. So the dense is also showing the extract, low extract yield and all the core plug samples coming from the free water level are also showing the low extract yield and the high extract yield is shown in, uh, in the proper oil column okay? and which is ma matching nicely with the water saturation derived from petrophysical means. In the vertical well V2, uh, we are having uh, again the same tracks, gamma ray, uh, the saturate to S14 and resin ratio, uh, porosity curve, and you're having uh, the these core plaques uh, for saturate uh, extract yield. So you're seeing, and the red curve uh, is showing the water saturation from resistivity. So you're seeing a nice match between the core derived, uh, uh, you know, core plaque extract yield, and the dense is showing no extract yield. And the free water level sample is showing also low extract yield. And you are seeing high saturate to resin and asphaltine ratio uh, in the proper oil column. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have here uh, in the third uh, vertical well V3, we do not have the saturation curve, uh, but we have good extract yield uh, in uh, the zone above the free water level. And the zone uh, uh, within the free water level, the core samples had very low extract yield. Okay? So nicely matching uh, to, uh, to the petrophysical evaluation uh, done in this, these three wells. Here are uh, three wells again. Uh, V4 is a vertical well. And I showed you that well uh, was drilled 
below the oil water contact, below the base case. So that well, the entire extent of the that, that vertical well was below the oil water contact, below the uh, uh, high case, and you are seeing that very low extract yield has been observed in these samples, uh, as represented by represented by these uh, green dots. Now, in the horizontal hole, uh, we had only well cuttings. And so, well cuttings are also not wasted. They are also good uh, good um, samples uh, to to have a look. And these broken lines in the horizontal well, the red line in the last track, is representing the uh, resistivity-based uh, saturation, water saturation. And you can see these uh, co-drived extract yield are nicely matching with the um, with the uh, uh, petrophysically derived uh, water saturation. And you see a, a trend as you are moving towards the toe. Uh, uh, section of the horizontal hole, so you are decreasing in your uh, in your extract yield, and your water saturation is increasing. Okay, so horizontal hole H two. Uh, so if you have a three thousand, so typically we are drilling about three thousand to five thousand feet of the horizontal section, and if you have uh, some means, as I said, the pyrolysis based uh, extract yield method is very cheap, very fast and the instrument can be deployed at the well site. So you will be having a direct measurement of the extract yield measured at the well site while you are drilling and as the uh, well cuttings are coming on the surface. Okay, So you can create a nice profile of the extract yield, which is equivalent to your water saturation. Uh, however, the pyrolysis based or, you know, is a direct method. There's nothing, you know, as assumptions made uh, in in the assessment of the water saturation or oil saturation. So horizontal uh, hole H2 is also showing a nice match with the water saturation curve. Uh, so these green points are showing so in between, in the horizontal hole, you are seeing a, a low in the extract yield. So the horizontal hole somehow entered into a section where there was no oil and the water saturation must have been very, very high, although, you know, water saturation was not measured. Unfortunately, in the toe section, we did not have any samples or we did not measure the uh, SAR and extract yield. Uh, look at the log data, mud log data as well, okay? So the high total gas readings, um, uh, this is uh, the the black curve is the wetness, which is an indication of the oil, and the red curve is the balance. And if the balance is more than the wetness, you are basically talking about a gas zone. But if the wetness is higher than the balance, you're talking about the oil. But oil zone may or may not be producible. So if the bal if the wetness is very very high compared to the balance, uh, you know, in in the sections above, which means that we are talking about a non-producible residual oil in this zone. So even the mud log data is also showing with due to its enhanced increased wetness ratio that there is a non-producible oil, which is also confirmed by low extract yield. So within a given horizontal hole, which is 5,000, uh, in this case, it is 3,000 feet. Uh, and yet we are able to see the value of this data despite very few samples. You see, I mean, only five samples for 3,000 feet of the section, and yet you are seeing the variation in the extract yield in this horizontal section as well. So where you want to complete your wells uh, in the horizontal section, uh, and when you will be test, uh, producing this well, of course, uh, uh, the pr uh, you know producing a strategy and completion strategy should take into account what data you see. Okay, and, and we believe that this data is providing a, a valuable uh, information in terms of, uh, you know, completing a strategy for horizontal wells. V5 and H3, both wells were drilled in the, in the low case, uh, as you may recall the location of these wells. And you see that, again, uh, the water saturation is matching nicely. The dense zone above is showing low extract yield and the water, free water level, uh, uh, samples coming from the free water level are showing low extract yield. The horizontal hole, uh, although unfortunately we didn't have uh, many samples, uh, 
across the length, horizontal length of the well, but only one sample, in fact, two samples, uh, which, are, uh, which, are, which are coming from very uh, nearby depths, but they're matching nicely to the, to the water saturation uh, in, this, in this case. So here is uh, in the tabulated form because uh, in the previous uh, uh, slides, uh, the graphs were normalized to a certain value. So, uh, you know, you are not able to appreciate the actual variation in the extract yield just by looking at, at those, uh, at those uh, uh, plots and figures in, shown in the previous slides. However, you can appreciate here. So samples, I've taken just as an example, you know, although you, I could have shown you all the wells, but I've taken you as an example to show uh, what you see in all those plots. So horizontal wells, uh, H1 and H2, they have very high uh, uh, extract yield compared to the samples that came from uh, within the free water level. Okay? And their uh, saturate to resin and S14 ratio uh, for a sample coming from proper oil column is uh, much higher than uh, the samples coming from uh, the free water level. Again, from the mud log also, you are seeing high total gas readings uh, for uh, samples coming from the oil column and uh, samples coming from free water level, they have very low uh, total gas readings from mud log. And their wetness to balance ratio, a wetness ratio is also a ratio, and balance is also a ratio, but it's a ratio of the two ratios. And uh, to just, just to appreciate, uh, you know, when the ratios are higher, you're talking about oil, and when the ratios are low, uh, you're talking about a non-producible, you know, uh, zone, maybe with some dissolved gas in it, okay? Okay, so here's an example. If you know, how, how, do, we, how do we estimate the stoic? Uh, of course, uh, we are using the petrophysical means. Uh, we, are, we are plotting our, you know, uh, the, the, uh, per, uh, the permeability uh, versus the saturation or saturation height function uh, above a defined, uh, you know, case, oil case. And, uh, and, and, you and you measure your, uh, uh, your uh, stoic based on this uh, modeling of saturation, saturation height function. Uh, however, in this case, and this has been done for uh, all the unconventional resource ass assessment, the source rock or tight rock based resource assessment is done uh, as following. You take a rock sample, known weight of that rock sample, and you measure the extract yield. Since you know what rock is it and what density it has, so you can calculate the volume of that rock which you have utilized to extract it. Okay, so knowing the volume of the rock and the volume of the oil, uh, you can calculate uh, the the stoipe for the entire extent of your field uh, using the extract yield data. Okay, and this is what I have done here. Okay. So, of course, uh, there is uh, some losses. Uh, this is the extract yield that I've actually measured on, uh, on, on samples. This is the average of few samples in the low case. This is the average of the few samples in the base case. Uh, and this is the average of the few samples in uh, uh, the samples coming from uh, below the base case and above the high case. And of course, I've added, uh, I've, I've assumed a 25% loss, although the loss is much more than that. Uh, and um, and I know the reservoir thickness, I know the trap area, and uh, PPM, part per million of the extract yield, I've converted into centimeter cube of oil, which is the, uh, of rock. So, so I've converted that into centimeter cube of rock uh, using this factor, and I got the oil in centimeter cube, so oil volume in centimeter cube. And I've converted this into oil in millions of barrels, uh, using the conversion factor, and uh, this is the distribution, stripe distribution in the low case, base case, and high case. So, so a, a low case plus base case will be having about 18 million barrels of oil. Okay, uh, and here are the conver conversion factors that I've utilized to convert centimeter cube to barrels of oil, assuming of course a certain API gravity. 
which in this case we know from PBT results that the API gravity is about 40. Okay. So uh, just like the unconventional resource assessment, uh, using the uh, expect yield, uh, one can uh, calculate or estimate the stoip as well. In conclusion, 48 core and cutting samples from eight wells were measured for expect yield and SARA composition, mud log and extract data with SAR analysis provide direct fluid evaluation and oil water contact identification. And you don't have to assume, you know, uh, in those for those mathematical expressions that we use for Archie or uh, and, and many other in uh, indirect methods of uh, saturation assessment. Typical oil column extracts in this case have greater than 35 milligram per gram of rock yield and greater than two saturate to as some as 14 in resin ratio and high total gas on mud log, uh, typically above one percent total gas. And 1% is uh, 10,000 ppm in, in case of mud log. Variable amount of extract yield from horizontal wells, though being above free water level through the entire section drill and being at constant depth uh, in the horizontal section, suggests that a uniform water saturation may not be applicable. So when we are drilling a horizontal well, we assume that this horizontal well uh, will be having a uniform oil uh, water saturation which we have shown that uh, that that is not the case. Uh, even if the trajectory of the well is is almost uh, at, at at zero angle, uh, there is a variation okay, in oil uh, oil saturation, and that can be measured directly using the pyrolysis of the well cuttings, uh, more or less in real time. Extraction in SARA data. Uh, and, and well test uh, data corroborates findings of this study based on mud log and extract data. So we have plenty of uh, test data uh, which, which confirms our findings. Uh, extraction and SARA data can be acquired at a fraction of drilling cost and can provide a high confidence formation evaluation and oil water contact identification on which a robust completion and testing program can be based. So a global threshold value for extract yield or total gas from mud low cannot be provided. However, if you've acquired this data in a given well, you can very easily know what you will define as a high value, a low value, and a medium value. And if you have a testing program available, where you will be perforating and testing. So without any doubt, uh, unambiguous selection of the zones for testing or even MDT samples, uh, you know, if not testing, uh, you can you can take a decision on that uh, with with high confidence. And 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 as I have highlighted, that pyrolysis is a much cheaper and faster method which can be deployed at the well site. So uh, you know, and that coupled with XRD instrument. Which will give you an you know indication of the uh, the rock lithology and all that uh, you know I mean, pyrolysis coupled with XRD deployed at the well site you have it you have everything that you would like to know about your uh, your rocks you are drilling through uh, instead of uh, you know making several assumptions uh, and using indirect methods for uh, saturation assessment have those two instruments uh, very cheap these days. Uh, and uh, and and uh, have a direct uh, real time almost real time uh, high confidence measurements at a fraction of the cost that we otherwise would have utilized uh, and and yet we will not be sure because those are so many uh, so many assumptions are are used in that uh, techniques used for an appraisal study can also be applied in the development scenario without any doubt, in a, in a, without any doubt so we can we can just use this as well in development scenarios so with that, acknowledgement and thank you. Thank you very much for your patience and attention. And I don't know, Tahir? Jee, Dr. Sub, it was really a very informative session. And um, you explained it very well. Alhamdulillah, very good. So let's see if somebody has any question, he can ask the question. Then we can move forward. The participants may say, Kwe Saval Karna Chahe Toh. 
جی میں میں بلکہ میری خوشی ہوگی کہ کوئی مجھ سے پوچھ لے کہ یہ کیسے ہوتا ہے یا جو بھی سوال ان کے ذہن میں ہے کتنے پارٹیسپینٹس ہیں ابھی یہاں جو لائیو ہیں وہ تقریباً چھ سات ہیں اس طرح جو لائیو اسٹریمنگ پہ چیک کر رہے ہیں وہ الگ ہیں تو کہتے ہیں کوئی سوال نہ ہو تو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ بہت زبردست اسپیکر کی طرف سے ایکسپلین کیا گیا اور سارا سمجھ میں آ گیا تو ان شاء اللہ ہم اس نے ذہن رکھتے ہیں اس نے ذہن رکھتے ہیں کہ بھائی وہ آسان تھا سمجھ میں آ گیا اور اگر بعد میں بھی کوئی سوال پوچھنا چاہیں تو میں دستیاب ہوں ان شاء اللہ تو چلیں اگر کوئی سوال نہیں ہے تو کنکلوڈ کرنے پھر طاہر ان شاء اللہ اٹ واز ریئلی ویری ایکسلینٹ سیشن اور ان شاء اللہ ڈاکٹر صاحب ہم آپ سے مستقبل میں بھی ریکویسٹ کرتے رہیں گے کہ اس سلسلے کو آپ جاری رکھیں تاکہ زیادہ سے زیادہ لوگ اس سے استفادہ حاصل کریں تو ان شاء اللہ ایک دفعہ پھر ڈاکٹر صاحب آپ کا بہت بہت شکریہ presentation very very well done very well said kuga mein jo hai kafi junior bhi hain matlab members agar thodi basic definitions ke hisab se bhi ek presentation ho jaye kyunki aapki delivery badi zabardast mujhe pasand aayi lekin mere liye bhi bahut baas cheeze bahut bouncing thi i was matlab imagine ke agar aap basic bhi thodi de ke aaj ki equation wagaira sab to sab to industry mein jo hai unko to pata hai لیکن جو یونیورسٹی میں جب ہم پڑھتے تھے تو یہ سب کچھ اتنا کچھ بھی ڈسکس نہیں کیا جو فریش گریجویٹس ہیں ون اور ٹو ایئرس والے ہیں وہ زیادہ مستفید ہو سکتے ہیں کہ آپ تھوڑا بیسک سے بھی لے کے چلیں یہ تو آپ نے پیپر سے ریلیٹڈ آپ نے کورس سے ریلیٹڈ میں نے پورا ہنڈریڈ پرسینٹ نہیں سنا کیونکہ بہت چیزیں میرے انٹرسٹ میں نہیں تھیں ٹھیک ہے ٹھیک ہے جرنل ہوتا ہے اگر پرٹیکولرلی ہمیں کسی یونیورسٹی کی طرف سے کوئی اسپیشل ریکویسٹ آتی ہے کہ بچوں کے لیے اسپیشل سیشن کرنا ہے تو وی کین ڈو دیٹ نارملی ہم جو سیشن ہوتے ہیں وہ جرنل ہوتے ہیں تاکہ سب اس سے استفادہ کر سکے ٹھیک ہے ٹھیک ہے تو یہ میں نے ان کا انیشیل دیکھا جو صاحب ابھی جنہوں نے کہا ہے ان کے کمنٹ بالکل صحیح ہیں کہ تھوڑا سا یہ ہائر لیول پہ ہے اور بہت سارے بیسکس جو ہیں وہ میں نے اسکپ کر دی ہیں تو ضرور اگر کوئی بیسک سیشن بیسک جیو کیمسٹری پہ اگر کوئی سیشن رکھنا چاہتے ہیں آپ تو طاہر جسٹ لیٹ می نو بالکل ٹھیک ہے انشاء اللہ جو ہے ٹھیک ہے ٹھیک ہے انشاء اللہ تو ٹھیک ہے انشاءاللہ پھر کوشش ہوگی کہ انشاءاللہ پھر اگلے سیشن میں آپ سے ملاقات ہو ٹھیک ہے تھینک یو ویری مچ تھینک یو ایوری ون ہو پارٹیسپیٹیڈ اینڈ تھینک یو السلام علیکم وعلیکم السلام